Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Okay, so now we're looking at the KS.CFG file that we copied over from a previous installation of ESX4. Now it's very important that we need to copy this from a server that's ESX4. We can't copy it from an installation of ESX3.5 because a lot of the parameters have changed in our answer file. Now we wouldn't want to use this file exactly. We need to tweak it a bit. And the first section we're going to want to tweak is the network section. We absolutely need to tweak this one because we can see here's the IP address that we gave another ESX server, the one we grabbed this file from. So if we gave the next ESX server the same IP address, it would have a conflict. So we need to change this, and I'm just going to make it .81. It may be something different for you, but we need to change it. The net mask and gateway may stay the same depending on if you're installing to the same subnet. And same with name server, you may want to keep that the same or change it. Host name is another one we're definitely going to need to change because we don't want two ESX servers on the same network with the same host name. So I'm going to change this one to esx04.itdvds.local. Now those are the only parameters you're absolutely for sure going to need to change. Everything else is just a maybe. The next thing we may want to change is uh, in this installation I chose a particular drive to install to. So I didn't go through the basic installation. And you can see up here clear part this is going to select the drive that we're going to install ESX on and it lists a specific drive that's what this VMHBA 0 C0 T0 L0 is now if we want to install on the first disk so no matter what the first disk is we want to install to it then we'd want to comment this out and a pound sign is the comment which means it doesn't read that particular line of text and we'd want to uncomment the clear part minus minus first disk. So this is going to make it use the first disk. Now if you're installing to similar hardware this will probably work. Uh, if not there's a chance that this name might be different. Or if you're installing to a SAN or something like that. And if you're going to change this up here most likely you're going to want to change it down here. These are going to be your physical partitions. And notice the uncommented line here is part slash boot, so this is going to create a partition for the slash boot partition. The file system type is going to be ext3, the size 1100 megabytes, and on disk. So this is going to specify the disk that it's going to go on. Now if we change it up here, we're going to want to change it down here. You can see there's an, a commented line that is the exact same except for on disk. It's going to use on first disk. So we're going we're gonna to want to comment this line out and uncomment this line. We're going to want to do this with all of our partitions. Down here are our service console partitions. So they're going on this virtual disk. So we may not need to comment anything out here because this is going to go wherever we define our first storage group. And our first storage group is defined in this partition here. Part storage one, this is going to be the name of the storage group. And you can tell it's a storage group because it's on a VMFS3 partition, or it's creating a VMFS3 partition. Here's the size, minus minus grow, means it's going to fill up any unused space on your disk. And it lets you know on which disk. Again, if we wanted it on first disk, we'd want to comment this line out with a pound sign and uncomment this line. We may also want to change partition sizes. Now these are all in megabytes. So you can see my swap partition is 600. We'll usually want to keep that the same, but maybe our slash var slash log partition, we want to make it a little bit bigger. But this is where it gets a little tricky. You can see that the virtual disk, the size is specified up here. But down here, it adds up to 7,600 megabytes. Up here, it says 7,604. So you want to be sure and change the size parameter up here if you change your parameters down here so that they add up to what's ever here and then add 4 megabytes. So I'm going to install this to similar hardware. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this back out, leave it the way it was, and uncomment this part. 
and I'll go ahead and save it. Just Control S, or I could go up here, File, Save. And I'm going to use this to do our next ESX installation. Now, very important, these files can get a little bit tricky, and they have to be configured right. So again, the, the best way to do this is to configure your partitions just the way you want them by going through the graphical installer. Then you don't have to modify them when you go grab this ks.cfg file from that installation. You can just modify the network section and you'll be good to go.